Okay, so we were finishing up this problem. Um, we have a matrix A, the row reduced version of A, and we found a basis for the column space of A based on the um, position of the uh, pivot columns. And so once you know where the pivot columns are, you go back to the original matrix A, pull those off. For the basis for the null sp or the row space of A, you use the actual columns from the RREF, or sorry, the rows from the RREF. They're displayed as columns. Good. So finally, uh, we're looking for the basis for the null space of A. By the way, before we get started, what should the dimension of the null space of A be? Well, um, we're in R4 for the domain, right? Because x needs to be in R4 in order for a times x to be defined. So the domain here is in R4. Um, we have two vectors for the row space. And so two vex for the row space. So that leaves two vex for null space. Good. And of course it is the number of, excuse me, <clears throat> I shouldn't eat dinner just now. Uh, yeah, let's try that again. It should be the number of uh, uh, free variables, right? Um, so that's two in this case. And so let's go ahead and solve it. Not enough of this stuff. So let's go ahead and maybe write x1 is equal to, uh, this will, I'm gonna be bringing those over to the other side of the equation. Right, so 2, 3, so that's going to be x3 minus x4. x2 is equal to minus x3 minus x4. x3 is free. And x4 is free. Right? And so therefore we have uh, x3 times 1 minus 1, 1, 0. Plus x4 times uh, minus 1 minus 1, 0, 1. Good. So here are the two basis vectors for the null space phi. Excellent. All right. But you remember all that from linear algebra, right? Okay. So just a brief couple of notes here about the uh, exercises on page. Um, let's see. They used to be on page 45. Let me pause and get the updated version. Okay. So the new exercise set is on 46 and 47. Um, I just wanted to just make a couple of quick notes here. Um, so for the exercises, the how do you find the magnitude of a vector? Well, typically it's the two norm, and so often people will put a two there. Um, but we're just going to use the two norm for now, and so that is the square root of x1 squared plus x2 squared plus plus xn squared. Okay, and notice that you can write that as x transpose times x square root or you could write that as x dot x or the square root okay and so these versions of the norm come in handy for exercises uh, four and five actually just four uh, well three and four exercises three and four and that's on page uh, 46 and 47 Okay, those are a couple of good exercises. Pythagorean theorem is kind of nice. Mainly, this is just notation to get you thinking about the um, uh, notation. So, for example, if I have the norm of a matrix times x, right? Is there a way I can rewrite that using this? Well, in fact, let me square that. Um, in fact, you will want to square it in the exercise. <laughs> Oh, you don't have to, but you can get rid of the square root sign fast that way. Yeah, this is going to be equal to, by using this notation, right, this is going to be a x transpose times a times x. Be careful of the ordering of things, right, because what happens when you take the product transpose? It goes in reverse order. Yeah, so this is actually equal to this. Good. And so I think that will help you 
Well, I gave you I gave it away. That's okay. I'll let you try number four. Uh, number five is something I did want to talk about. Uh, let's go ahead and talk number five on page 47. So uh, in this case, we're taking a look at e, uh, the column space of A, null space of A transpose. And I've got a Y that's out here. And so I'm trying to solve uh, AX equals Y. Well, Y is not in the column space of A, right? Therefore, um, there is no solution to this. No solution to AX equal Y. Why is that? A times X is a linear combination of the columns of A, right, using the constants in X, or using the weights in X. And so, by definition almost, right, uh, for this to have a solution, A times X has to be in the column space of A. And so in this case it's not, and so therefore we try to orthogonally project it into the column space of A, and so that's going to be Y hat. And so the question is, is what matrix, is there a matrix? P such that P times Y is equal to Y hat. So that would be our projection matrix, and that would be the projection of Y into the column space of A. Now if the columns of A were orthonormal, then P would just be uh, A, A transpose, because then A would actually be equal to the Q that we were talking about before. Um, however, in because the columns of A are not, in general, orthonormal, so normally, usually, columns are not orthonormal, and so then we're stuck. So we want to try to find a formula. Is there a formula, a formula for P? Let's see if we can write that. Good. So um, to get things started, Let's take a look at this picture again, and there's something interesting in this picture. In this picture you see that uh, y minus y hat is orthonormal to the column space of A. What does that mean? That means that y minus y hat is in the null space of a transpose. What does that mean? That means that a transpose times y minus y hat. By the way, uh, I just realized my notes have the y hat first, so let me go ahead and reverse that. Doesn't matter which one you do. Uh, y hat minus y is equal to zero. Good. Now, because y hat is in the column space of A, there exists, is everybody familiar with that backwards E? That says there exists an x such that A times x is equal to y hat. Right, that's like we were saying, that's almost by the definition of being in the column space. Is some linear combination of the columns of A will give you y hat. Good. Therefore, let me rewrite this equation that I had here, A transpose times, and now, uh, in fact, let me say this is going to be X hat, because this is a particular value of X now, right? And so that's going to be A times X hat minus Y is equal to zero. Good. All right. Well, uh, let's go ahead and feed through our A transpose. That says that A transpose a x hat minus a transpose times y equals zero. Right? 
or that a transpose a times x hat, oops, x hat is equal to a transpose a, a y. This was the original y, right? Good. All right. Now, I'm going to argue that a transpose a is invertible. And uh, the only way I'm going to be able to say that is if the null space of a is just the zero vector. And so I'm going to assume that. Um, another way to say that is I'm going to assume that a is m by n with full rank. Okay. Um, so therefore, um, you'll notice that in the notes we say that a has rank n. Okay. Good. So we're thinking of a as being a tall matrix and all the columns of A are linearly independent. And so that's going to make A transpose A invertible. And so therefore x hat is equal to A transpose A inverse A transpose Y. Now notice that I cannot break this up, right? I have to leave that uh, together. Uh, because I don't, uh, in fact A is guaranteed not to be invertible if it's M by N, right? Good. Okay. Uh, we're not quite finished yet. I need y hat. And so the way to get y hat here is just to multiply both sides by a. And we have the desired matrix. This is y hat. And so this big product of matrices here is your p. So what we're saying here is that if I take y that's in the RM and I apply P to it, I get Y hat, which means that P projects, P projects Y in Y hat into the column space of A. Good. Uh, and so this, so this is a nice formula because this formula works for a generic full rank matrix. Good. Full rank meaning the rank is as large as it possibly can be. Good. Allowing, allowed by the numbers M and N here. Okay, very good. Um, so that, by the way, you might notice if A has orthonormal columns, then A transpose is equal to A inverse, and what do you see here? Or I shouldn't say that, A transpose A is just the identity matrix. And so we get uh, a, a transpose, right? This would be, ah. Uh, <laughs> I'm waving my arms at the at the signal, and you can't see my hands. So sorry about that. Uh, a times a transpose a inverse. Can't you see that? Equals a times i times a transpose, and that is equal to a a transpose. And this we said was the projection matrix, right, into the column space of the matrix A. Good. So this is again only true when A has orthonormal columns. Good. And I've run way over again. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, so in the next video we'll get started talking a little bit about the next page here, uh, the decomposition theorems.